Hey guys, how's everyone doing? Welcome to my channel. This is Style Like On Nat. For some time now, I've been meaning to do an About Me session. A lot of you know me as stylist, um, blogger of the Lifestyle Collective. Um, so I've been in working in the fashion industry for a very long time. Um, I'm going back, let's say, 10 years now. Um, so after I graduated in politics, uh, social policy, I, I knew that pursuing a career in law wasn't for me. My journey began in Harrods, so I used to, to work in uh, Donna Karen Signature, so in the international design room. I mean, it's all changed now. I would kind of liaise with the personal shoppers at the time. Um, I got to meet a few celebrities as well. Um, so I think for me, that was the kind of, you know, tell, the telltale signs were right there that I would eventually work as a personal stylist. You know, I worked in Browns, um, which is still going, uh, but uh, at the time, kind of, one of the most popular uh, boutiques um, in London. Um, you know, and I got to work with some incredible designers, like more so international brands. But, and then a position came up in Selfridges. So I thought this is a, sounds like too good of an opportunity to miss. And this position was for, they were looking for a personal shopper. Um, 2005, I set up my company, Style Icon. Initially, it was kind of, sort of more corporate focused, uh, shopping for professionals, which I still do now. But then that was the kind of main focus of my brand. Uh, so I did that for a good couple of years um, and some great opportunities came about. Um, and one tip is just to kind of, you know, as I said, you network, you keep on going and you meet some amazing people. But at the time, um, you know, I, I, I think companies like uh, the British Fashion Council found my details on the internet. So they reached out and said that we have you know, London Fashion Week, at the end of every uh, season, they have London Fashion Weekend. And, and I would provide style tips. Um, and that was great fun. Uh, for, for a good four days, you know, I'd have my own set up. As part of the official opening of London Fashion Week, I think Paul Costello, he was like, the, the, his show was always the, the, the opening show of London Fashion Week. Um, and prior to that, they had a hospitality area. Um, so the guests were, you know, that they, they were corporate guests who paid for that kind of hospitality kind of thing. Um, so it was, it was kind of at the time, I think they had like various guest speakers um, from like different uh, creative industries. Um, uh, so I did a talk on body shapes, sort of built up my, my contact base, my clients through you know the early stages of my career and then after a while I noticed that I would get like more requests via my website um, word of mouth and I would shop for clients abroad I had some great opportunities to travel to New York Paris and you know a lot of my clients um, are based here in London um, so I think for a good couple of years I was making good money and um, the personal shopping really kind of kicked off. But I then, I think along the way, I was still very active on social media. And um, I kind of became very interested in sort of working with celebrities because I wanted to do something a bit more creative with my work. Although personal shopping is great, it has its bonuses, you get paid, there and then or after the job, there's no fuss. Um, you know, it's a very different experience. Um, however, as a creative dresser, I kind of wanted to just kind of go that step further with my like, personal styling. Uh, someone reached out to me. And she said, okay, would you be interested in styling uh, Shingai from the Noisettes uh, for Well Child? Uh, Prince Harry is patron of this charity, um, so it's you know a great initiative which helps children in need. Um, so Shingai was asked to perform at this dinner, charity dinner, which takes place at the Savoy. Um, so I had the opportunity to style her, and that was my big break. 
within celebrity styling. Um, and I got to meet Will Smith. I mean, my goodness, I mean, that was, I would love to style him and Jada and, you know, that didn't happen, but I had the chance to, to meet him and I was going to do the Carlton dance, you know, and all of that, but I thought, no, 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 let's not go that far. Uh, but yeah, it was, you know, incredible experience. And then another opportunity came up the following year. Same thing, for the same thing, a well child dinner, and I got to, to style Alexandra Burke. So these were kind of like the highlights of my celebrity styling career and um it kind of really that kind of molded everything yeah i had the opportunity to to, to, to tr go to la which was fantastic i got to work with uh, amy williton and and i styled her for elton john's oscar party uh, which was probably one of the most amazing experiences of my life um i, I didn't go to la specifically to style amy williton um but it kind of happened, you know, organically through a mutual contact. And that was the sort of icing on the cake. So not only did I attend Elton John's party, um, but I also got to style her for it. Um, and that was great. So I, got, I reached out to a few designers based in LA via my socials, Instagram. And uh, one designer in particular, dressed uh, Kim Kardashian the year before so it was great to see Amy Williton in um, one of their dresses not just because they they worked with Kim Kardashian but because I love the brand and uh, you can sort of check out the dress right there um, so yeah I've, I've, I've got to experienced some you know great moments um you know through my work as a stylist celebrity stylist back then and um, i worked with some you know, very cool people um but after a while i think it was just yeah i think people were spending less so my private shopping um, became quiet and uh, you know celebrity styling the celebrity styling yeah also kind of um, yeah it was slow so I kind of had to think of a way to you know keep my passion going and you know I think whenever you kind of experience a dip in your career um, you've got to kind of think of ways um, to you know to just yeah keep things going and I need another creative outlet so it was during this period where I began to write so you know but years of study I think you know it, it didn't you know it's never gone to waste and you know I kind of reverted to my kind of academic like discipline um, but I kind of like felt as though I neglected years of study and you know it was great to kind of utilize those skills again like my writing skills and uh, doing research on various designers and it kind of that's what happened so I, I'd go to events and write about events um, and then over a period of time um, I would say from, yeah, from 2015 to date, I have worked with some, you know, some great designers. Um, and I, I had designers at the, at the time kind of contact me and say, you know, they'd love me to review their product. So I thought, okay, this is, this is quite good. I mean, it's authentic. It wasn't something that was, I, I planned to do. And um, I think at the time I was kind of pushing my personal styling business celebrity styling so much um, that was kind of like my main focus more than anything you know until I kind of thought about other ways to make money um, and the great thing about blogging is that it's you know it's, it's about you it's about your interests and you know you have control over what you do who you collaborate with and it's a great way to give support to um, brands too. Um, so over a period of time I then had beauty brands contact me and then um, 
I would write about experiences, you know, luxury experiences. So the highlights of my career as a blogger so far um, would have to be attending F1 Live London. This was last year in the summer, gorgeous day and um, it was all hush hush, everything was embargoed um, but it was like the Grand Prix in central London, um, amazing experience, hospitality was on point, we're talking champagne and for anyone who knows me I do like a glass of bubbles so they had a champagne uh, reception in the National Gallery, you had a uh, little mix performing so it was a great day so I got to write about that. Another luxury experience was um, the Boodles and I was invited by a brand called Play Brave, a luxury sports um, brand, um, who dressed the ball girls for the tournament um, at the time. So this was in um, uh, Stoke Park, and a great day out. Uh, one thing I've learned, if you're at a point in your career where things are not going so good, I think those eureka moments, really, that's when you have a eureka moment, and that's when you kind of you just you know you start to think and then from nothing you can create something yeah, things just developed organically to the point where I organized my launch um, which was last year in November it was great to kind of get the industry people together and to celebrate creative innovation I thank you guys for all of your support so far um, which brings me on to tips of how to survive the industry number one do not give up. Persevere. It's taken me years to get to the point I am at now, and there's still time to progress. I still, I still have a long way to go. But if I gave up at the point where my celebrity styling work was just nothing much was happening, then I wouldn't be where I am now. Although it sounds cliched, it's not. Okay. I consolidated my contacts over the years and I continue to build my brand. You've got to find ways of collaborating with the right people uh, whereby your work, your collaborative work reflects one another's brand and work ethic and um, I think because I, you know, I, I love fashion and I love style um, that encouraged me to write about red carpet stuff and you know my blog is now known for you know beauty and, and, and charity work so it all works hand in hand so these are things that I have a passion for. Take small steps to get far. Um, number three networking. I mean that has done wonders for my career. Um, you know, I haven't had the man, although I've, I've, I've worked with agents in the past, but you know, if you don't have the budget for an agent, which can work out pretty costly, you have to do a lot of groundwork for yourself. Number four, social media is so important. You know, if it wasn't for me being consistent with my social media, I think a lot of the brands who I reached out to during the time when, when I was in LA, um, in the lead up to that, um, if I hadn't been in contact with these brands way before, it would have been, I think, more difficult for me to, to, to get clothes for my styling project, project at the time. So it's just about long lasting relationships. Keep that communication going um, and then build those relationships. And in time, that sort of sense of loyalty and trust comes into play. Yeah, you've just got to be diverse and, 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 and creative with your content. Um, so on that note, guys, um, what's next for Style Icon brand? Who knows? I will keep you posted, but you know, but I will be sharing more vlogs. So any comments, you know, anything, any questions you have about this vlog, feel free to leave your comments below. We believe in your creative vision. Because it's your creative vision that will make a difference. Stay tuned guys and thank you so much for tuning in.